All right, so last week we talked about some principles for studying the Bible, getting better at listening to what God is actually saying to us. But today I want to I give a fourth principle. I think it's important. So saved it for its own uh, episode. And that is the principle of genre. That is that the Bible is written in different kinds of writings, different genres. Some of it's narrative, some is poetry. There's parables, there's proverbs, there's letters. And it's important for us to know what we're dealing with because many people read the Bible as if it's the same kind of genre. And it actually ends up leading to people making mistakes of interpretation. You, you take Proverbs, which are principles. They're general principles for us to live by. And if you live by these patterns, these words, these attitudes, these actions, life is going to be better. That's the idea that Proverbs presents to us. But they aren't particular promises for every situation in your life. I mean, take like Proverbs 11.8. It says the righteous will be rescued from trouble, but in their place, the wicked are going to go in, which essentially is saying if we took it as an absolute truth in all situations that you're only going to get into trouble if you're wicked. And if you're right, it's only going to go good for you. Now, we know that's not the case. As a matter of fact, there's a whole book, the book of Job, that is meant to kind of debunk that. But is it true as a general statement? Yes, absolutely. If you live right, things are going to go better for you. You are going to have less pain and suffering because the consequences of your sin won't be following you around all the time. If you live wrong, yeah, the consequences are coming and they're going to get you eventually. So is it generically true? Yes. Is the principle accurate? Oh, most definitely. But can you pin it down to where every single situation is, is that? Is somebody either living right and getting the benefits or living wrong and getting the punishments? Well, no, that's not true. We even saw this in the Psalms, right? The psalmist says, man, I almost tripped up when I thought, why are the wicked prospering? Why are they doing well? He said, but then I went into the sanctuary and I thought through it and I saw their end. Well, it's not going to end well for them. So yes, the principle remains true, even though it wasn't playing out in the moment. So we always got to be careful about that kind of stuff when we're looking at uh, the Proverbs. But if you take something else like a parable, par Jesus talked a lot in parables. Parables tend to have one point they have a big idea, a big application to that idea. But what's happened to parables is they get caught up in the little pieces of the parable. A lot of people do this, right? They begin to pick apart the parables and they want to know what everything symbolizes. And they're just focused on that. And, and you can end up losing what the scripture is trying to say, what God's trying to say to us by trying to dissect every small piece of a parable. Augustine did this. He was a great theologian, but man, he, he could sometimes get caught up in dissecting parables. Uh, the Good Samaritan, you know the story. Uh, a guy is walking on his way. He gets beat up by thugs and robbed and nearly killed. And the Samaritan eventually comes by, picks him up, takes him to the inn, and make sure he's cared for. And it's all in answer to the question, who is my neighbor, right? That's what was being asked of Jesus. Who is my neighbor? Who do I have to love? And Jesus told that story to say pretty much anybody in need is your neighbor. Well, here's what Augustine did with that. Augustine said that the man who was walking on the road that got robbed was Adam. And the thieves were Satan and his angels. And they beat him up to get him to sin. And, and the good Samaritan was Christ. And the, the two guys, uh, the 
the two guys that passed by and didn't help, that was the Old Testament. And then the Good Samaritan was Christ. And then he took him to the inn, which was the church. And on and on he went with every detail. And he drew this whole big story about the idea of salvation. But he did so, and when he did it, he, he kind of ruined the text. He kind of ruined what Jesus was trying to say. And what Jesus was cry, trying to say, one big idea, your neighbor is a person in need. And the application of that truth, you need to help the person in need. That's what Jesus was trying to say. He wasn't trying to make this great secret parallel to the story of salvation for all time. And if you even look at, at say, when Jesus did this, right? He, there was a time when Jesus kind of showed them what the pieces symbolized. He did this with the sower and the seed, right? He said there was four types of ground that the sower put some seed on. Some was hard, some was rocky, some was thorny, and some was good, right? And he even said, you know, the bird is Satan, comes and takes the seed off the hard ground. And, and then he says the thorns are like uh, cares of the world and, and that. And there's a superficial soil with the rock and, and trials, you know, make those people fall away. They don't hear the word. So he did kind of pe look at those pieces, but think about it. They were all leading back to one point he was trying to make. And really, it was a question. What kind of listener are you? Are you the listener that is hardened against it and eventually you're not going to hear it? Are you the listener that has that shallow, superficial joy, but then it never takes deep root? Are you the listener who gets choked out because of all the thorns and cares of the world? Are you the good soil that takes in the word and allows it to produce fruit? It's all one idea. All the pieces are going towards one central idea, and that is that people listen and hear with ears to hear and receive it and are transformed by the word. So all this to say, it's really important that we understand what it is that we're reading and what the parameters are on some of those genres. And that'll help us. It'll go a long way towards keeping us from making some errors in our thinking and maybe even from us becoming disillusioned with the text because we think it means something that it really doesn't.